So the traditional way econom economists have been thinking about development, uh, you know, trying to make sense of a very complex world, is by aggregating stuff into few things. Like you know, instead of talking about ap you know, apples and and motorcycles and haircuts, they talk about GDP, so the total value of production. And, and instead of talking about bridges and power plants and 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 schools and hospitals and so on, they they talk about say capital. Or human capital. So, and then they try to come up with a story of you know why countries grow and so on, uh, by asking you know how much the GDP go up by how much capital they have or how much human capital. So, so they're talking about the relationship between these very very aggregated things. Uh, now, reality is obviously a mess. It's made out of a thousand things. It's um, a thousand millions of different products uh, and different uh, inputs that go into making those products, which. I like to refer to them as capabilities. So, so uh, we wanted to develop a way of uh, describing how economies change without collapsing all the richness uh, of, of their structure into, into like these uh, two or three uh, uh, aggregate measures. And, and, and to capture that, um, uh, I hooked up with, initially with uh, uh, this network scientist is physicist Albert Laszlo Barabasi, and he assigned to me um, his PhD student Cesar Hidalgo, and that was uh, three years ago, and, and now Cesar is a fellow at the Center for International Development and my co-author, and we've done a ton of things together, and all of them are related with the idea that we want to be able to capture a, a reality in a more complex description, but without losing our sight or orientation because there's just too much information. So the idea that we have is that development is about the accumulation of a very large set of capabilities that go into making a very large set of possible products. Countries that have many of these capabilities are able to make many things, so they will tend to be more diversified. So rich countries are more diversified. But also products that require many things, more capabilities, are going to be harder to be made, so fewer countries are going to be able to make those products. Using this simple trick that countries that have more capabilities are more diversified, products that require more capabilities are going to be made by fewer countries. Combining these things, we found out a way of indirectly measuring how complex is the capability space of countries. And we found that our measures of the complexity of the capability space of countries has an enormous capacity to explain how rich the countries are, how much they'll grow in the future, what they'll be able to produce in the future, and so on. And in applying these things to how then does production evolve, we were able to find how countries move from their current set of products to the future set of possible products uh, that they could make in the future with some ease. And this uh, we've been able to apply to a bunch of countries trying to uh, place them in, in terms of their current set of capabilities and their future possibilities. And thank God this has sparked quite a bit of interest and, uh, and we've been able to, to work with uh, quite a few countries in this, in this realm in the Americas, both from Mexico to Argentina, stopping in Colombia, Chile, Paraguay, uh, Peru, and in Africa going from Morocco and Algeria all the way down to South Africa, and in Central Asia and Kazakhstan or in Pakistan. And, and so as, as we work uh, with this view of things, we are able to kind of like think of development strategies in different dimensions than the ones that we would have used uh, before this research.